Illicit money is money that breaks laws anywhere along the way in its origin or movement or use. If it breaks laws anywhere along that path, we uh, consider it illicit. There are three sources of illicit money, uh, corruption, criminality, and commercial tax evasion. Uh, for Africa, a lot of people have thought that, oh, the corruption is the biggest part of that. Um, we think it's the smallest part uh, uh, of it. Um, and in particular, when we're talking about the movement of money across borders, the cross-border flow of money, the corrupt component is the smallest, criminal is next, the commercial component is by far far the largest. It facilitates the movement of uh, the money. It consists of um, tax havens uh, where you can bring money in secretly and uh, uh, keep it. Um, it consists of disguised uh, corporations where nobody knows who owns uh, the business. It consists of uh, anonymous trust accounts, which serve the same uh, purpose. Um, it, uh, it includes a whole raft of money laundering techniques. Um, it includes the misinvoicing of trade, uh, the, the, the mispricing of imports and exports of trade for the purpose of shifting money out of a country. There are a lot of elements of it, but they're all designed uh, to, to accomplish one thing, and that is to, uh, to move money in a hidden manner. That's what they do, and, they, and, and this structure, the, this global shadow financial system, performs that role extremely efficiently. The first thing that has happened is that the Financing for Development Conference, which is going on in Addis Ababa now uh, in July, here in mid-July, um, has put the issue of illicit financial flows very much uh, on its agenda. Those three words, to be honest, were coined by Global Financial Integrity um, uh, nine years ago. And, and we've succeeded in getting those words into the global vocabulary. Today, illicit financial flows um, is referred to by everyone, the World Bank, the IMF, the OECD, the United Nations, everybody, to the extent that uh, it's now abbreviated, IFFs, uh, it's referred to. So what has happened over the last uh, almost a decade is We've succeeded in getting the concept on the table. We've succeeded in getting the vocabulary used by everybody. The next step is to take some positive steps, um, uh, some positive measures uh, to curtail IFFs. We're making progress, um, uh, and particularly with the leadership of Tabo and Becky uh, uh, in this. We're, we're, we're making progress. It's slow, and it will be slow. It'll go, this is a process that will go on for uh, for some decades uh, into the future. But we are making progress. We've, we've seen a lot of accomplishments, uh, um, um, not only generated by us, but by other organizations that we work with as well. Um, I would, um, I, I certainly compliment Transparency International, with which you're probably familiar. Uh, uh, TI does an excellent job around the world, as do a number of other organizations. We're making progress, but we know we've got a long way to go. They all use exactly the same mechanisms to uh, shift money around the world. The terrorist may have another wrinkle on that, which is the physical smuggling of gold or diamonds or something like that. Um, but basically, um, uh, it is the, the shadow financial system that facilitates the movement of illicit money that provides most of the terrorist uh, financing money. Uh, this is certainly true in North Africa, in, uh, in the Sahel. Um, uh, it was true of bin Laden and uh, uh, ISIS uh, and so forth. They use these mechanisms uh, uh, as well. Uh, to, to generate money and to shift it where they need to uh, buy weapons or get recruits or what have you. Uh, 
the basic answer is greater financial transparency globally, uh, plus in the richer countries, plus in the poorer countries. Um, and that transparency means less opportunity for um, uh, illicit money to move through the chateau uh, financial system. Um, there are a number of specific measures that can be taken to engender uh, transparency. Um, most of it boils down to a matter of political will. It's not that difficult technically uh, uh, to do. It is a matter of political will. I'll, I'll just uh, give you a, a, a very small story. My father used to be a banker. And I have seen my father. He was a small town banker in Louisiana. I have seen my father turn down a deposit that somebody wanted to make from a state far away because he couldn't figure out why does that individual want to cross all of these states and come and deposit money uh, in my bank. And he turned it down. Today there's hardly a banker that would do that. <laughs> Bankers will take the money. Uh, and, and we've got to be stronger on, uh, on asking the right questions when that money is brought uh, uh, for deposit in our accounts. None of this is rocket science. It is a matter of, of, of political will. It's a matter of engendering into organizations a desire not to take the money rather than to take the money.